the hand for being an awesome ministry. Amen. Paul writes at the church of Philippi, he makes this statement that I thank my God upon every remembrance of you in verse 3. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. From the fellowship of the gospel from the first day. From the first day we really started this thing until now. I thank God for it. Being confident. This is the part I want us to get to. Being confident of this, what thing? Very thing. That he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. He will perform until the day of Christ. I want to just uh, continue on where we started this morning. Tell somebody, be extremely confident. Be extremely confident. As a matter of fact, this time when you say it, I want you to raise up your right fist. Be extremely confident. Be extremely confident. Act like you've got some power when you're talking about extremely confident. Look at somebody and point them and say, I ain't playing with you. No, no. Be extremely confident. Be extremely confident. Don't be going out like no punk. Act like you got power. Amen. Be extremely confident that what God has given you to do, you are able to do it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in this, re in this room at this particular time. It may be extremely, extremely confident. This is the posture of saying, God, I got my mind made up. Anybody got a heart fix and a mind that's already made up? Yeah, you've been through enough to know that it, when all else happens in your life, the best deal you got going is being able to call on God. And God helping you through your present circumstance. And so I am talking under the, in this voice today to tell to you that whatever swag you got it, keep your swag. Look at somebody say, keep your swag. Keep it. Don't let nobody take you down now. You know, everything that you got going on, you need to keep your swag. Don't let nobody take away from you all that you are in the earth. And don't let them treat you like you less than what you already are. You've got to be extremely confident. Come on, say it in. Extremely confident. And then there's a way to do this. There's a way to do this. It is labeled in three different areas. The first way is, is that we have to always allow hope to rest in God. That's the first thing we do. Allow your hope to rest in God. But after doing that, the second thing is, is be bold enough to act on what you say you believe. That's the second thing that's tied to that. The third thing is, is that once you let your hope rest in God, be bold enough to act on what you say you believe, then dare to walk by faith and not by sight. Trust God with what he says he will do on your behalf. But when we talk about being confident, confident in the Greek is the word parhesia, which actually means to uh, be Bold, to have a frankness, to have an assurance, to have a cheerful courage, to be in a place where you're courageous based upon not any attitude or disposition of self-aggrandizement or personal achievement or authority, but based upon the essence of who you have on your side, being in a place where you know that you can be resilient, you can be optimistic and enthusiastic because you know you have more that be with you than more that be with the enemies that come against you. And so when you talk about being confident in this context, we're talking about being in a place where we put energy behind our very purpose. That whatever we do, we see this purpose, we press our way to it because we understand that God is going to deliver us and bring to pass exactly what he said he will do on our behalf. Now, I need to make this statement to you that the test of confidence is that after you have done righteously, can you stand in it until God releases his promise for you? This is the challenge here. Can I wait and believe that God will do exactly what he said he would do while I'm waiting and holding on to my confidence that what I see in my eyes is, not, is only a fraction that leads to the blessing that is headed toward my life. And so my encouragement to you is to keep living and to 
press yourself to understand that part of the joy of the Lord that you have on the inside is rekindling and recalling your joy to make sure that God has the prominent place in your life and you allow nothing to take away from you that which God has ordered for your very future. So confidence then for us must be maintained. Say that with me, confidence must be maintained. Yeah, you got to work with your confidence. You have to maintain confidence. It is not something uh, that, you know, that you just have without having some challenge to it. Even as much as you already know, suggestion can make you doubt for a moment and recheck something you already know. Anybody ever been in a position that you were already on your way to do something, but somebody just told you something different and it made you, I better go check that. Before suggestion can make you shift from your confidence. And this is what I want you to make sure that you pay close attention to because there are things that you should never allow to interrupt your confidence in God or stand in the way of believing what God can do. As a matter of fact, impatience sometimes ends up being the reaction that I'm not trusting what I say I have confidence in. Because the imbalance of impatience is often based upon our ability to be mature in our present situation. Sometimes you've got to say, all right, I'm tough enough, strong enough, and, uh, and I've got enough maturity to handle this present situation, and so I'm not going to fall off. I'm going to stay right here and do what I need to do because according to Hebrews 10 and 35, the word says for me to cast not away my confidence, but therewith I have great recompense or payback of reward. So if I take care of the business that God has given me, I then have to at the same time say I trust God to be able to do everything he said he can do, even if it's not comfortable for me to wait in the process. Understand this, waiting is an annoyance to your hope. Come on, talk to somebody and say, waiting is an annoyance to your hope. Anybody in here ever had to, to wait on something and your hope was for it, but you kept having to wait?